Hello Summoners and welcome back to another Pro Guides video. My name is Nathan Ng and I'm here with the 12.13 mid patch update. We'll be going over the updated tier list for all 5 roles and follow up on balance changes from the patch. But before we jump into things, I just want to give a shout out to all our coaches over at ProGuides.com. Our meta videos like this are a great way to give you a push in the right direction, but if you're super serious about climbing, you'll want to go and check out those guys. They're all top level players and they're available 24-7, just waiting to share everything that they've learned with you. So stop grinding your face into the wall alone and head over for some professional help now. Now let's get back onto the tier list. First we'll be starting off with our top laners. Despite a relatively large nerf to his passive that took the damage down from 4% of his bonus health down to 3% on patch 12.12b, Tom is doing quite well as a top laner. He's still consistently able to win a majority of top lane matches by forcing early fights. The few that he doesn't win early, he can at least sustain with his Q and the combination of Doran Shield and Second Wind. With his oppressive single target damage, he's also a major threat to carries at all points of the game. With strong laning and tons of disruption and carrying power later on to the game, he has been bumped back up to the S tier. One thing that can really boost performance on him is running the right summoner spells. Ghost and Ignite is a lot better than a standard TP flash, giving you a ton of sticking power and more kill threat once you get a hold of the target. Trundle gets added to the top lane tier list as an S tier pick. Most people label Trundle as a tank breaker, focusing heavily on what his ultimate does, but that's completely ignoring the rest of his kit. With his Q not just giving him AD but also lowering his foes, he's also a hard counter to a lot of AD bruisers. Combine that with the tank speed that he gets from his W's field, and he's a very strong duelist that can beat down the vast majority of champions and early game all-ins. He remains an impressive 1v1 champion at all stages of the game, so once you get that early lead, your foe basically never gets a chance to fight back on it. As with Tom, it's a pretty good idea to run Ghost and Ignite on him. That gives you the best ability to run down foes and smack them to death. TP isn't really all that useful, since you basically never want a 5v5 anyway. If the enemy team wants to force Dragon in the mid to late game, you should easily be able to trade inhibs and turrets for it. Urgot has picked up his performance lately, so we're bumping him up to the A tier. He's definitely not nearly as good as he was a few months ago, but if you can get past his weak early game, he's still a super hard scaling carry at 3 items. He's one of the weaker picks in the A tier, due to how his matchups play out. In the harder lanes, you really need to know how to manage waves and survive early so you can scale and be useful later. If you struggle with stuff like that and you find that you always end up pushing and being ganked, Urgot probably isn't the best champion for you. Victor gets promoted to the A tier. With Maw and Death's Dance becoming insanely strong anti-magic options a while back, we had to demote him, since he would just get rolled by the bruisers that would just abuse those items. But in the past several patches, a lot of super OP bruisers all have had their power reeled in, and Victor is able to pretty safely farm out almost all lanes. And being that he is a super hyperscaling pick, being able to safely farm means that you'll almost always have a huge impact later on into the game. With him doing okay in recent patches, we thought the small buff that Clyde was getting on this one would make him enough to be an A tier, but he's just not really making the cut. He's still super matchup dependent, so outside of those niche instances, he's not just worth it at all. So we're moving him down to the B tier. We were pretty hopeful that Rennington's buff this patch would at least make him decent in some situations, but it turns out that hoping isn't just enough to save a trash champion. He's still really really bad, so we're moving him back down to the C tier. Riot needs to be a bit more aggressive with their buffs and nerfs if they want to actually change what champions are at the very top and the very bottom of the lists. Simply adding a small bit of power to an ultimate of a champion that's supposed to be a hard lane bully isn't going to be doing much. He really needs some buffs to his basic abilities, major buffs that can actually make him strong in trading in the first few levels. Snowballing is so much weaker post durability patch that I feel like they can afford to give him those types of buffs without making him getting too out of hand. Now for the jungle, here's our list. We knew that Master Yi buffs were going to give him a lot more skill expression, but we severely underestimated just how OP they would be. Even after being immediately hit with hotfix nerfs, he's still super super strong. That's just how over the top the buffs were. He scales so much harder now that you can safely blind pick him to pretty much every single game. He still lacks early presence, so obviously there will be games where your team loses so hard early that you don't get the chance to scale. But as long as you aren't one of those people that's inting, there's a good chance that you can carry most of those games when behind. Fiddle 6 is going to be another champion that deserves to be a tier higher than we place him going into this patch. But in this case, this was a changeup we predicted that could easily happen. While the numbers on the buffs may not seem all that huge, adding a quarter of a second to his sphere is actually a lot bigger than it sounds. Assuming that you're landing good ultimates, that extra 0.25 second is being applied to multiple champions, maybe even the entire enemy team in an ideal situation. They're forced to stay in range of both his ultimate and his drain, which also got buffed this patch, giving him much, much stronger team fighting. Since team fighting is the entire reason you pick Fiddle 6, it makes sense that even a small nudge like this could push him to the very top of the jungle. Yet another scaling pick that's doing super well is a Mumu. This one's a bit more surprising. His 12.12 buffs were relatively small ones, with his Q's Matakos going down, and his ultimate just getting an extra 50 damage on it at all ranks. 
but the stats don't lie, and his win rate has shot up to the mid-50s. This might be because of other meta shifts. Belveth gets moted to the A tier. Her nerfs have left her in a spot where she's still a very strong carry if you can reach 2 or 3 items, and have a lot of passive stacks, but they've made it more difficult to get those more consistently. Basically, she feels a lot more feast or famine, with a good opposing jungler now being able to shut her down if they played the early game well. The Olaf buffs are doing a lot more for him than we expected, so we're promoting him to the A tier. He's still a very snowball reliant champion, so you'll need to play him aggressively to get that lead and keep it. But you'll now find that he can get those leads quite more often and consistently with his faster jungle clear. That being said, if you're a fan of Olaf, and not specifically playing him in this role, he still does a lot better as a top laner. As the meta has shifted, Sejuani once again moves up to the A tier. Most jungle picks now aren't super aggressive early, so you can actually now have time to farm up and reach 6 items without the game being over before you can really affect the lanes. That being said, there are a couple of things that can add to that. Like Olaf, Sejuani is a champion that really does a lot better in the top lane. When you do jungle with her, she's a little bit too conditional. She relies on having melee lanes to make the ganking a lot easier, especially when you don't have her ultimate. Ivern gets moved up to the B tier. His 12.12 buffs put him in a spot where he's a very viable pick, but I would just caution against it in most cases. When you lock him in, you're just as reliant on your team carrying as ever. If you're super confident in both your team comp and your carries to do all the work in 5v5s, then go ahead. Personally, I could only really justify if I was doing it with somebody like an ADC or a team comp already had plenty of frontline. Udyu gets moted down to the B tier. He was performing a bit above average for a couple of patches, but he's just right back to being a super mediocre guy. Other tanky pigs are overall a lot more useful in fights later on. They tend to have higher damage and are a lot better for actually engaging fights. While you think the teamfight heavy meta that we're in right now would favor him, Jarvan is actually doing pretty poorly, so he's getting demoted down to the C tier. The problem is that, aside from his 5v5s, he severely lags elsewhere. His ganks are okay, but his clear speeds are so slow that he isn't able to pressure the map very well. And he's a pretty horrendous duelist, so other champions just kind of roll him. Shin also gets moted down to the C tier. He's kind of like Rennington of the jungle. For a champion that's supposed to snowball fast and hard early on to succeed, he's not really having that much success in the first few levels of the game. When he doesn't do well early, he's entirely useless for the rest of the match. Evelyn gets dropped down to the C tier. If you snowball early with her, she's still the one-shot machine that she's always been, but it's very hard to do that consistently. And even if you are incredibly fed with her, you're usually only going to be killing one, maybe two people in any given fight. You'd pretty much rather have 20 kills on one of the champions higher up on this list. Now, here's our mid lane tier list. Vex gets promoted to the OP tier. Her Q buff is doing far more for her than we thought, with Vex becoming probably the best overall pick in the mid lane on this patch. But it makes sense, her Q is her bread and butter. It gives you better poke, better wave clear, and is the vast majority of her damage in team fights. Timer Digger gets promoted to the OP tier as well. His buffs last patch made him an insanely strong laner, and now he just demolishes games left and right. It's also worth noting that it's not just his ability to kill champions. More damage on turrets means faster objectives as well, which is a big part of what he brings to the table. Kaz Hidden gets bumped up to the A tier. This one's a bit nuanced. If you have the wave management skills to survive until 6, and the patience to be a farm bot until 11, he can definitely be considered a strong S tier pick. But a lot of players don't have those things, leading to less consistent results. Echo is a champion that always just seems to be on the tier list roller coaster. Without ever getting any direct changes to himself, the way the rest of the meta shifts just causes him to constantly move up and down. And at the moment, he's on the downswing, so we're demoting him to the B tier. Now let's move things down to the bot lane. As predicted, the armor and HP buff to Karthus did nothing for him in the jungle, but made him a way better bot laner, so we're moving him up to the OP tier here. We didn't bother adjusting Sivir's spot in the tier list at the start of the patch since we had no idea how this mid scope update was going to affect her, but now that we've seen it in action, we can safely say that she's ridiculously OP. Riot went light on the hotfix that they pushed out, so yes, even after that, she's definitely the best marksman in the lane. Neela had a very good showing on release, and she was pretty much immediately hotfix nerfed, but we still think that she's easily an S tier champion at least. Her ranking could easily go up to the OP tier depending on how she's doing after people start mastering her. I wouldn't be surprised if she just got the same treatment as Belvath and Zeri, with nerf after nerf until she's barely playable in most skill brackets. To finish things off, we have our supports. Fiddle gets promoted to the OP tier here as well. While this may seem a little bit troll, trust me, it's not. We've recently talked about how Fiddle 6 support was an up and coming pick, and the buffs he got this patch that was aimed at him as a jungler has pushed him up to compete with the best meta picks here as well. With Eclipse's nerf, Senna has finally taken a decent hit, but she's still definitely strong enough to be considered S tier. She's still a ridiculously strong scaling pick, but with her early game spike being less OP, you aren't going to be nearly as impactful as before. And that about wraps things up for our 12.13 mid patch update. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and feel free to let me know your thoughts in the comment section below where the champions fall. 
Also, check out our description for a link to join our Discord community. As always, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.